Our next speaker is Jared Lickman from Oxford, who will talk about the Erdős primitive set conjecture. Please. Great, thanks, Mel, uh, again for organizing the conference. Uh, uh, it's nice to be able to see people as well, um, and eventually maybe uh, we can put uh, their, the vac the virus uh, behind us. But for now, um, uh, still, uh, I guess, lingering a bit. Uh, so today, I'm going to be talking about uh, a proof of the Erdős primitive set conjecture. Mm -hmm. Can you see the slides? Uh, can you see that I've changed the slide? Yes. Yes, it's good. All right, great. So I'm going to start with a definition. Uh, we'll say that a set of integers greater than one is primitive if no member in the set divides another. So we're going to exclude uh, the number one because if any primitive set contains one, uh, then it will just have to be the singleton set. So for uh, convenience, we'll just look at numbers that are at least two. So some uh, interesting examples of primitive sets include uh, numbers in a dyadic interval uh, from x to 2x, where we leave out uh, one of the endpoints. So uh, such a dyadic interval is primitive because if you take any number, uh, all of its multiples are going to be, so if you take a number n between x and 2x, uh, its smallest multiple is 2n, which will then uh, fall outside the dyadic interval. So no integer in it will divide each other. Another key example is the set of primes. Uh, and moreover, for any k, so we'll denote the set of primes by p, curly p. And uh, moreover, for any integer k, the product set p to the k uh, of numbers with exactly k prime factors counted with multiplicity is also primitive. Uh, and a nice way to see this uh, is that any integer that has k prime factors, uh, all its divisors will have fewer than k prime factors, and all its multiples will have more than k prime factors. Uh, when you count with multiplicity, at least. And so no two can divide each other. Um, sometimes these uh, uh, integers are called k-almost primes. And another uh, example from uh, of great interest historically is the so-called perfect numbers, uh, which are numbers that are equal to the sum of their proper divisors. So for example, 6 uh, has proper divisors 1, 2, and 3, and 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals uh, 6 again. And these numbers have really fascinated mathematicians for a long time, and actually historically have uh, been some of the motivation for uh, defining uh, primitive sets uh, in the abstract setting. Um, so so the, there's some really uh, nice connections. Um, so to see uh, that perfect numbers are in fact a primitive set is uh, requires a little bit more work than these other examples, but uh, again with uh, a bit of effort, one can show this. And if people want to see uh, or hear the proof of, of this result, I'd be happy to, to come back uh, at the end. So uh, in the study of primitive sets, there are often some interesting and unexpected results. So early on in the 1930s, many people, including Chawla, Davenport, and Erdős, believed that all primitive sets have uh, zero natural density. Uh, however, in 1934, Besakovich actually constructed uh, counterexamples of sets of primitive sets whose upper density uh, got arbitrarily close to one half. And this was a great surprise to uh, people at the time. Uh, by contrast, uh, Baron and Erdős showed that the lower density must always be zero. Um, and so uh, in particular for a primitive set A, it may or may not have the, the natural density may not may not always exist, but the lower density must always be zero and the upper density uh, can get arbitrarily close to one half. And this, this one half is, is, is in fact sharp. Uh, but moreover, in Erdős's proof in 1935, he showed the stronger result that the sum of one over n log n ranging over uh, elements in a primitive set uh, is always finite. So we'll, in this talk, we'll be very interested in this sum, uh, which we'll denote by f of a for this, this series of one over n log n. Uh, and he showed, in fact, that this, uh, this sum, f of a, is uniformly bounded over all primitive sets a. And uh, once you are given uh, a sequence of uh, a bounded sequence, it's natural to ask what the maximum uh, bound is for the sequence. And in 1988, Erdős famously asked if this maximum is attained by the, the set of prime numbers. 
So in other words, the Erdős primitive set conjecture asks that for any primitive set A, this series f of A, which is the sum of one over n log n, is bounded by f of the primes. And uh, to, to be concrete, uh, f of the primes is nothing more than the series of one over p log p ranging over primes. And uh, with a bit of uh, help uh, on the computer, one can show that uh, this series is approximately 1.6366. Uh, and again, if there are any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to, to stop and ask. So as some initial progress on this, this problem, in 1993, uh, Erdős and Zhang proved the upper bound that f of a uh, is bounded by 1.84 for all primitive sets a. And more recently, uh, Pomerantz and I had improved the bound to f of a being at most e to the gamma, where gamma uh, is the euler masher rosin constant. And uh, in light of these results, uh, so one, uh, when, when studying this problem, one might uh, think to approach the conjecture by uh, directly computing the partial sums of this series uh, up to x. Um, however, this, this approach uh, uh, kind of becomes inadequate because already we see uh, for the series for the primes, it converges quite slowly. So namely, if you're looking at the series of one over p log p, for primes uh, p greater than x, uh, this has a convergence rate of about uh, one over log x, which is quite slow. Uh, and that's already in the case of the primes, but more, moreover, there exist primitive sets A of large numbers, all of which are bigger than x A, uh, for which uh, their corresponding series actually tends to one as x goes to infinity. And so uh, one way to view this is that uh, the main contribution of uh, these series for uh, a set A could be arbitrarily uh, far out uh, on the number line. And so this kind of naive uh, uh, approach to truncate and look at partial sums uh, doesn't work. Um, however, uh, a more fruitful approach to this conjecture uh, turns out to be to split up our set A uh, according to the smallest prime factor of its elements. So uh, in other words, for any prime P, we'll let A sub P to denote the subset of elements in our set A, such that n has smallest prime factor equal to p. So now we've uh, partitioned our set uh, A as a union of A sub p's. And uh, we'll now introduce a definition and say that a prime p is erdős strong if f of A sub p is at most f of p. So that is uh, one over p log p, holding for all primitive sets A. So in other words, p is an a prime p is air to strong if the singleton set p is maximal among all primitive sets a sub p. And this, uh, the introduction of this definition is useful to us because the conjecture would follow if we knew that every prime uh, p is air to strong. And uh, this is because then our sum of uh, f of a splits uh, as a disjoint union. So we just have a sum of f of a sub p's and if every prime is error strong, we'd have a pointwise bound of f of a sub p just by f of p. And this would recover the full conjecture. Uh, so uh, in 2019, Pomerantz uh, and I uh, obtained a sufficient condition for a prime p to be error strong. But unfortunately, this condition fails already at the prime two, uh, which uh, is quite disappointing. Uh, but, in, but it does happen to hold uh, for the first uh, 10 to the eight odd primes. So it, it fails just at the beginning, but thereafter uh, it seems to hold for, for quite some time. And this, this was coming from uh, some numerical uh, calculations. And moreover, uh, it turns out if one assumes a strong form of the Riemann hypothesis, one can show that this condition holds for over 99.999973% of primes. And this is in a, a logarithmic sense. Um, so an, another way to perhaps view these uh, results is that uh, assuming the Riemann hypothesis, uh, a tiny but still positive proportion of these primes fail this condition. And we also know that uh, even unconditionally, there are infinitely many primes, P, that fail the, uh, this condition. Any so, bound on the first odd prime for which it fails? 
Uh, so that's a good question. So this is really, um, I'm suppressing uh, some, some results for, for time constraints, but this really connects to uh, skews number and uh, prime races. So for example, there was a famous prime race, prime number race uh, between the prime counting function pi of x and the logarithmic integral lie of x. And originally many people thought, uh, uh, I think Riemann conjectures explicitly that the, that the error is always the same sign, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so that uh, was a famous conjecture back in the, uh, back in the uh, early 1900s and turned out to be false. And this is uh, very much in the same spirit, that there is, there is uh, some counterexamples uh, that do show up, uh, but very far out in the number line. Yes, but, but definitely thank you for the question. Um, yeah, so, so a perhaps a pessimistic view of this result is that uh, the Erdős conjecture could be false or at least beyond the reach of unconditional tools. Uh, and more recently also, uh, it, uh, I show that a, a translated analog of the Erdős conjecture is false. Uh, namely, if we consider our sum f of a and perturb it by translating by some value h, consider the sum of one over n times log n plus h, so uh, this is a new sum. And in particular, we would recover the old sum by just setting h equal to zero. Uh, one might hope that uh, f of a comma h would be bounded by f of the primes comma h. And this would be a natural uh, conjecture, a natural analogous conjecture to make. However, uh, there exists primitive sets a for which f of a comma h is bigger than f of the primes comma h. And this already kicks in uh, when h is a bit bigger than one. Uh, and so this perhaps uh, also contributes to a pessimistic view, uh, suggesting that the original conjecture, uh, when h is equal to zero, if true, it is only barely so. Nevertheless, as the, the main result of this talk, uh, we are able to answer uh, Erdős's question in the affirmative. So for any primitive set A, we have that f of a is bounded by f of the primes. And moreover, uh, in the course of the proof, we're able to show that every odd prime is error to strong. So that is to say, for any primitive set a and any prime, at least three, we have that f of a sub p is at most f of p. Uh, however, it does remain an open question uh, whether or not p equals two is error to strong. So in other words, it's still an open problem whether uh, any uh, primitive set A of consisting of only even numbers, we have that uh, f of A is bounded by one over two log two. So this is a very concrete question uh, that's still open. Um, and kind of as often happens in number theory, uh, one may handle the odd primes separately from p equals two and uh, p equals two uh, can be kind of be kind of more uh, uh, stubborn and, and, and difficult to handle. There's uh, some people often say that uh, you have the odd primes and then two, which is the oddest prime of them all. And, and this is definitely in the, in the same spirit. Uh, so uh, there are uh, uh, a few uh, results uh, in connection to the methods in the, this proof uh, of the result uh, that I'd like to describe, um, but for time constraints, I'll, I'll limit myself to the, the following question. So you can ask uh, to look at um, kind of an asymptotic version of the Erdős uh, conjecture. So if you're looking at primitive sets A that consists of large numbers, let's say all bigger than X, and then you still ask, and then you try to play the same game where you want to find the maximum of F of A ranging over these uh, sets of large numbers. And asymptotically as uh, in the limit as X goes to infinity, uh, Erdős, Sarkozy, and Zemerady uh, conjectured that uh, this kind of limb soup of f of a is at most one. And uh, our so in the course of our proof, uh, we're able to make progress on this uh, conjecture by showing that this limb soup of f of a is at most e to the gamma times pi over four, which is approximately uh, 1.399. So we're not able to uh, completely resolve this question, but uh, make some uh, initial progress in, in this direction using these methods. Uh, and in fact, um, one can um, 
are already for this conjecture one, we can say a, a little bit more. Um, in fact, that this Erdős Sarkozy Zemmerady limit must actually lie in the interval between one and 1.399. So this new upper bound, which is pi over four times e to the gamma, uh, as an upper bound, but as a lower bound, we can we can say that there is uh, one. And, and so therefore their conjecture, this ESS conjecture is asserting that uh, this limb soup uh, is actually an equality of one. And so the, the reason uh, that we can kind of make this upgrade to their conjecture is that um, the set of K almost primes um, we show uh, forms. So number one, we recall that the set of K almost primes is a primitive set uh, therefore, it's going to be following uh, falling in this uh, supremum, and the smallest uh, such number is two to the k. So, in particular, as k tends to infinity, uh, the these k almost primes are going to be uh, consisting of only large numbers. And uh, a result, a, a recent result of mine, uh, shows that uh, the limit of f of the k almost primes tends to one. And so, in particular, in this lim soup. Uh, we will have a, a subfamily uh, which tends to one, and therefore, as a lower bound, uh, we get one. And um, out of interest, um, I, I, I'd like to mention um, that uh, we, we get uh, in the proof, we get a kind of uh, a rate of decay. So we get f of the primes is, a, is asymptotically one plus O of essentially one over the square root of k. So essentially, we're getting uh, square root convergence or essentially square root cancellation in the error uh, and um, using uh, essentially uh, results from uh, the prime number theorem and uh, related work by kind of Sate and Selberg. However, uh, working numerically uh, just on the computer, uh, computations suggest that the true rate of decay for this problem may be actually exponential. So uh, maybe the true, uh, at least numerically, the, the true behavior seems to be one plus O of two to the minus k, and and this is this is also open. So, uh, in the remaining part of the talk, I'd like to give a sketch of the main proof ideas uh, that go into the the result, um, and to do so, uh, uh, we'll begin with uh, Erdős's original argument uh, from 1935, um, but uh, kind of dress it up in some modern language, perhaps uh, that will be uh, useful to to uh, have going forward. And we will show uh, in, this, in this sketch that uh, f of a is bounded uh, asymptotically by e to the gamma. And this will be kind of in the case where all the elements in our set are large. So as some notation, we'll say that uh, capital P of a uh, will be the largest prime factor uh, of a given number a. And so then uh, we can write our series f of a, which is just one over a log a, the sum over one over a log a. And we can uh, simply bound this first by one over a log p of a. And so this is just saying that the largest prime factor of a is uh, trivially bounded by a itself. And once we've um, done this step, uh, we see that uh, Merton's product theorem allows us to say uh, that one over log P of A is approximately uh, this uh, Merton's product. So specifically the product over primes up to P of A of one minus one over P. And this is a, a, cl a classical theorem of Merton's. Um, and um, again, we're, we're kind of uh, giving a sketch here. So we're just assuming that all the integers A are large. Uh, and uh, for, for simplicity, we're assuming that P of A is large. Um, but really, if, if, if one is uh, trying to be rigorous, that one can use explicit estimates, explicit ex estimates to make uh, uh, this approximation uh, justified. Uh, but once we've done this uh, step, we can see now that uh, this product of one over p log, of one minus one over p uh, is nothing more than the natural density of a special set. So uh, given A, uh, we define the set L sub A to be the set of multiples of A of the form B times A, where all the primes in B are at least P of A. Um, and so the, the natural density of, of this set L sub A is simply uh, 
1 over a, a first factor of 1 over a to account the fact that we're looking at multiples of a, but then uh, we're ruling out the possibility that uh, b has any factors smaller than p of a, which gives us uh, 1 minus 1 over p over all these small primes. Uh, so uh, that is to say now, uh, we've once we have applied Burns product theorem, we can reinterpret uh, this expression uh, as uh, e to the gamma times a sum of densities uh, d uh, sub of l a ranging over uh, our primitive set a. Um, so now once we've done this, uh, by a, a relatively short argument, uh, the fact that a is primitive uh, actually implies that these sets l sub a are pairwise disjoint. So this is an important, a point, a, a important property of, uh, of A, uh, where we're using uh, primitivity in a crucial way and is not true in general. Uh, but now once we, once we have this, uh, we see that the sum of densities D of L sub A is now equal to the density of the union of these L sub A's. So uh, for convenience, we'll say that L sub capital A is just this union of uh, L A's. And so now we have a bound uh, of E to the gamma times D L A. Um, but uh, we know that any density is at most one, so we can just bound uh, this density uh, and get uh, finally that f of a is bounded by e to the gamma. And so this gives uh, uh, a rough sketch of, of the proof. And again, to, one can make um, uh, this argument uh, rigorous by inserting explicit estimates um, and getting uh, kind of asymptotic uh, a result. But to, uh, th there's a uh, I'm, I'm suppressing uh, some of the details for simplicity. So um, and to, uh, in order to uh, make progress on this problem beyond Erich's argument, uh, we identify two crude steps um, in, the, in the sketch we gave before. So the first was the step where we just bounded P of A by A itself. And uh, clearly, a step can be wasteful, uh, in particular, if many of the elements have small primes. So uh, for example, if we knew in advance that p of a squared was at most a for all elements, uh, then just repeating Erich's argument would automatically give us a savings factor uh, of 1 half, uh, leading to a bound of f of a by e to the gamma over 2. And this is already less than 0.9, in particular, less than f of the primes. So another way to say this is that uh, for the special uh, case of primitive sets uh, that satisfy the stronger inequality, uh, we have the Erdős conjecture. Um, on the other hand, the second uh, step we use that is quite crude is just bounding the set, uh, the density of L, L sub A uh, just by one. And uh, so this step can also be wasteful. Um, uh, for example, if uh, A has some known uh, Kind of multiplicative constraints. So, for example, uh, if A uh, contained only odd numbers, then you can deduce that uh, the density of L sub A is at most one half. And then similarly, uh, one would get a savings factor of one half in the argument, leading to the same bound, which is less than 0.9, and therefore uh, given the Erdős conjecture in this special case as well. So, these are the two uh, kind of crude steps, um, or potentially crude steps. Um, but uh, we note that for when A is the primes of themselves, uh, both these steps are perfectly efficient um, because in the first case, uh, when A is a prime, A equals P of A itself. Um, and similarly, uh, the density of L sub P is equal to one. And this is uh, perhaps an analytic statement, uh, an analytic interpretation of the statement that every integer has a unique smallest prime factor, um, which gives this, uh, this result. Um, but then the question is, uh, what about uh, the case where A contains composites? Um, so for the sake of time, I'll only give kind of a, a brief uh, description of, of what's going on. Uh, but the main idea uh, is that we show that if the first step above is efficient for A, then the second step must be wasteful. So that is to say, if P of A is approximately A, then we should get a savings on this density. And specifically, uh, if uh, we have the inequality that uh, P of A uh, to the one plus v is uh, at least a, then we get a, a bound on the density by the square root of v. And this uh, bound uh, is a refinement of the trivial bound of one, uh, at least when v is in the range between zero and one. And so this density bound uh, 
is the key ingredient to refine the Erdős argument and ultimately leads to the, the proof of the full conjecture. Um, and morally speaking, this density bound is saying that uh, a primitive set cannot contain too many composite elements uh, with all large prime factors. Uh, so for sake of time, uh, I might uh, skip over, but uh, one of the key ingredients in also in improving this key density lemma is the, the introduction of uh, L primitive uh, sets. So we recall that uh, uh, the set of multiples L sub A uh, arose naturally in the proof. And this is kind of, uh, this L is referring to the lexicographical ordering of, of numbers according to the prime factorization. And uh, one can define now, so L multiples, uh, if, uh, so if N is an L sub A, we could say N is an L multiple. Uh, and this, this is a very special set of multiples, uh, not all of the multiples. And then one can define an L primitive set uh, if no member in the set is an L divisor of another. And this uh, definition is a bit weaker than primitive, but turns out to be very useful in, in the proof. Uh, and uh, given this definition, it would be natural to ask for an L primitive analog uh, of the Erdős conjecture. So asking if f of a is bounded by f of the primes for all L primitive sets a. Uh, however, it turns out that one actually cannot make improvements uh, to the Erdős argument in the L primitive case for this wider class of, of sets, um, uh, which, um, so, so we get the same bound e to the gamma and turns out to be sharp for L primitive sets, uh, which is larger than f of the primes. And this really further hi highlights some of the subtlety in the, in the original conjecture. Um, so there for, I, I think I'm over time, but there are, are, are further uh, uh, results to, to talk about. But just in closing, uh, I, I've hoped to sample just a few of the many open questions that have quickly arisen uh, from working on this, on this conjecture. Um, and this was really in the spirit of, of Erdős, who was a master of posing easily stated uh, yet mysterious problems whose study uh, leads us to deeper structures. And with that, I, I thank you for, for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, are there questions for Jared? I don't see anything in the chat. Um, great. So it's a lovely result, of course. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and we now have a one hour break. <laughs>